things up, guys. Considering that Fantastic Beasts and where to find them begins this weekend, I have decided to rank all eight Harry Potter movies for all those great Harry Potter fans out there. Harry Potter is something that I have grown up with, so I have just been waiting to do this video, and I'm very excited to do it today for you guys. There will also be many spoilers in this one, so spoiler warning for all of you guys that have not seen any of the Harry Potter movies. Oh, and in case you're wondering where my arrival in Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk reviews, I'll talk about that at the end of this video. And note to self, guys, I do not dislike any Harry Potter movie. In fact, I like them all very much. It's just that I have to rank my least favorite one and my favorite one. That's just how it goes. So to begin with number eight, I have gone with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, I do not dislike this one by any means. I actually think it's a very fun movie. But Dolores Umbridge... That lady is very, very annoying, and that's a part of the movie that felt very repetitive and got very, very annoying after a while. It felt like a tired plot that just kept being used, and I was not feeling it. It did not work all that much for me. There were a lot of other fun parts in this movie, but then again, this movie was also somewhat dark, and that was something I was not used to seeing in a Harry Potter movie. Like, the other ones before this were not nearly as dark as this one. In fact... When I went to see this in theaters, this movie was extremely dark, and I got very scared of some parts. Yeah, I know, I was just a little nine-year-old kid, but still. This movie was a little frightening for a kid like me, but I will say that ending battle at the end of the movie was fantastic, but unfortunately the death of Sirius Black happened, and it was a good way to end the movie, but the movie overall is probably my least favorite in the entire series. At number seven, we have Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. The reason I put it here is because it's definitely the most uneventful Harry Potter movie out there. Not much happens in this movie at all. That's why I've always said, I like to say this movie is the calm before the storm. Not much happens. It's pretty quiet throughout the entire thing. But there are slithers of plot twists that happen here that definitely lead up into the Deathly Hallows movies. One of the reasons I do like this movie, though, is because it feels like a traditional Harry Potter movie, like the first, second, and third. It feels like they're young guys, again, at Hogwarts like they were in the first few movies. So I feel like this is a good character movie overall, and I found it pretty enjoyable. And of course, the death of Dumbledore is so sad, but it's really intense, and it's done very, very well at the end of this film, and it's a good ending to start the Deathly Hallows. And number six, we have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Yes, it is the sequel to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and this one I felt was always very enjoyable as well, but the one problem with this one was that it feels like the first movie all over again. There's a lot of similar things here, and honestly, these two, the first one and the second one, are very interchangeable to me. I don't see much difference in them, so... I honestly think they're really enjoyable movies overall. They brought you into the Harry Potter series, but honestly, The Chamber of Secrets is not exactly the best Harry Potter film. It does have a lot of repetitive themes. I do like the whole Tom Riddle story, but overall, this movie is not as good as it could have been, and it's pretty much just a reshoot of the first one. The entire Chamber of Secrets scene at the end, though, that is great, too. In fact, what these movies have been doing so far, the ending scenes have been absolutely fantastic, and that's part of the reasons why I do like them a lot. But overall, I just feel like those are the three weakest ones in the entire series. And number five, of course, we have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and I like this one a lot because it's something I obviously grew up with, and this one did a great job in bringing us into the wizarding world of harry potter i thought it was great it showed us everything having to do with harry potter and i thought it was done very very well and honestly this is what got us all into harry potter to start it had a good ending as well you know you have that huge i guess you like to split up into three parts of course but we end off with voldemort meeting harry of course and a big reveal there and I thought that this movie overall was done very well. It is the introduction to the entire series, and that's why I like this one a little bit more than The Chamber of Secrets. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is a very good time, and many of you guys, I'm sure, love it too. At number four, we have Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, I know a lot of people think this is the best one 
and in my opinion it is up there but it's not my favorite but there are so many memorable scenes in this movie it's impossible to count them all because this movie is just very iconic it's done very well a lot of you guys love the time travel scene of course i did too in fact if i remember when i was a little kid i would go over to my neighbor's house and we would literally just re-watch that entire sequence over and over again because it was so good and was very 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 well done and i honestly thought it was very enjoyable and one honorable thing to mention in this movie is that sirius black is basically the villain when in reality he's not so there really is not a true villain in this movie because voldemort he's really nowhere to be seen in this entire movie he's brought up a couple times but in reality it's basically sirius black and there's basically no villain in this movie. The entire film as a whole was done very well, and I understand why people love it so much, and honestly, I like it a lot too. All right, guys, this is a top three. Here we go. At number three, we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. I know a lot of you guys do not like this one as much, but for me, I really like this one because it's a huge adventure. In fact, this is the first one where we're not in Hogwarts. And honestly, I love the adventure that Harry, Ron, and Hermione go on to find all the Horcruxes. And I thought it was done really, really well, honestly. You're kept into the action. I love the adventure, as I've said, and I just thought this movie was a lot of fun overall. Many people complain for it being boring, but this one is a great character movie. It has a lot of emotion. Honestly, I could cry a couple times in this movie because this movie is pretty sad, especially with the death of Dobby. That was very sad. But this is obviously the beginning of the end, and I thought it was a great way to start the Deathly Hallows. I honestly love Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. It's very underrated in my opinion, and I think all of you guys should start respecting it because if you look at it, this is a very, very good movie overall. Okay, my top two. These two, I honestly could interchange so many times. I do not know what to do, though, because these movies are both absolutely fantastic. I love them both so, so much, and I had to choose between the two. So, I just did it on based on what I think is the better of the two movies overall from the critics' eyes. So, at number two, I decided to go with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This movie is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorite movies of all time so many memorable scenes in this movie the tri wizard tournament the yule ball the quidditch match in the beginning of the movie and of course voldemort he becomes a human form for the first time and it is so so good this movie is so epic and it felt very cinematic this is honestly in my opinion the most epic harry potter movie yet it just feels that way. I think it's because of the Triwizard Tournament. The Triwizard Tournament was great. Of course, Victor Crumb, he is awesome. One of my favorite Harry Potter characters in the entire series. And one thing that you need to pay attention to is the score. It is fantastic. And if you pay attention very, very slightly, looking back at all the Harry Potter movies, the fourth movie opens up with a different score than every other one. The other seven movies open up with the same score, but this one opens up with a much darker, better theme song, and I honestly love the score in this movie. It's so, so good. This movie is the turning point in the entire Harry Potter series, and I love The Goblet of Fire. It is a great, great movie. So that leaves me with number one, and yes, I do think this is the best movie in the entire Harry Potter series, and that would be Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Yeah, this one is obviously very very epic as well if you don't know me guys i love epic movies and i think that four and eight of the harry potter movies are absolutely epic they are fantastic and this is the ending of harry potter and obviously this is the most action-packed movie we have yet and 
Honestly, this movie is just overall fantastic. It's a complete thrill ride. You feel all in. You're behind Harry because now he is a leader and he is taking on Voldemort. The best part is obviously the ending when these two finally face off and we finally kill Voldemort. I hate Voldemort. In fact, Voldemort is probably the most hated villain besides maybe Darth Sidious and all the villains in every movie I've ever seen. I absolutely despise Voldemort very, very much. There's obviously a lot of emotion in this movie as well. We have a lot of characters that die and it creates a lot of emotion, a lot of sadness. And of course, Harry basically dies in this movie, but he comes back to life. And that was a great, great way of doing it too. I thought that was a great scene there. And this movie overall is just absolutely fantastic. I think it is the best one in the entire series. It's a mysterious movie too. It's very heartfelt and the ending is perfection. I thought they have done a great job with the ending in this movie. I thought it did a great job in just ending the entire Harry Potter series as a whole and I thought that it was just done to perfection. I love the ending in this movie. Nothing should have changed from that. I loved it. This is a fantastic movie. Honestly, all Harry Potter movies are great, but I think this is the best one out of all the eight movies we have today. So guys, thank you for watching my ranking of all eight Harry Potter movies. Check them all out if you have not done so. They are all absolutely fantastic. So in case you guys are wondering where my arrival in Billy Lynn's Long Half Time Walk reviews are, the theaters around me have not been playing those movies for some reason, and basically the entire surrounding area has not been either. So I'm going to have to wait until this weekend to see both of those. But do expect plenty of reviews coming up in the next week as I'll be seeing so many movies within the next week or two. So expect both of those reviews. Expect the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find the Review. And of course, expect the Allied Review coming up hopefully next next weekend. I am looking forward to seeing all those movies. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a fantastic day.